Chapter 13. Red Mesa. Drenched in a dead man's bilge, Wraith presented shyly to seem smaller before the firing line. The fish's confession, witnessed by few. Rumours of his guilt matriculated by word of mouth, scoffed at and disbelieved. Beguiling innocence, Wraith's cursed yellow eyes moved falsely to draw the others into her act. While Raspberry reformed, to watch Gregor through many facets, more falsehood, Wraith could not pierce Gestalt's veil. In truth, she stared through to the tent, whose wide footprint accommodated large gatherings. A place for statecraft, diplomacy, counsel and deals struck in the dark. A flanged masher bounced out of the fish's domicile into the depths of their row, rolling unevenly, bumping off Gregor's steel toes. He blinked. The cord tugged, the fuse alive. Run! Gregor stitched the command onto a quiltwork of human souls, Twish, Quat, Kier, Triarch and Estevac, moving them quicker than biomechanics alone. The silent tune of a ticking time bomb beat. Three, heels pivoted. Four, Gregor leapt, covering vitals. Five, O oh, slammed like a slab over the grenade. Poom, giving ground bloated away from O. Oh. Gregor whirled as the pressure snapped his eardrum and whisked up vertigo. The sky tumbled. Clods and pebbles leapt. Shrapnel split the ankle of a twish raider, blasting yellow fat and sinew from bone. Deafened by the ring, inspired by Wraith's own overconfidence in the senseless seas, Gregor ran for his friend, rolling the groaning mosaic over. Gregor grabbed O under the arm to drag his companion from the line of fire. A pinched nerve sparkled pain throughout his back. A cap fell from Wraith's side. Her masher's ripcord, twined of its own volition by an invisible finger, snapped. One. Gregor dropped O, heavy head hitting hard. He released his call to flee to order Wraith. Approach. Two. Gregor caught her, severing connective tissues of Miria from the Watcher and Masher. Three. Gregor palmed the Masher from her belt and shoved Wraith back. Four. He hurled the baton, spiralling end over end towards the great tent. Five. Gregor brought Wraith down under him, covered by he and O. An airburst hammered his innards. Shrapnel tore through the camp. A secondary explosion rebounded, arced through bent space-time, grape-shotting those who'd turned heel to stand their ground and fight when Gregor released them. Miria. Unscathed, the mosaic's shirt took the bulk of the force, torn to a mummy's garb. Get up and get moving, Gregor said, shaking O. His voice rattled through damaged drums and erupting chaos. Green and violet portals burst through the seams of otherwise unseen geometry. Three fractal brushstrokes formed the points of a pre-sighted, triangulated strangulation, budding with shelled shock troops, actuated by encant mechanisms, shimmering with jewel craft barriers, and frothing with alchem ablatives evaporating from the red-hot interlocking plates of scarab shells, a strike force of three Sevnantes heavy irregulars slammed into the Twish encampment with the thousand steps cruelty. Cockeyed, crystal-clear lenses formed large, owlish eyes over a gas sack, underlain by green alchems vaporized into performance-enhancing aerosols that dulled their sympathies and emphasized berserk psychopathologies in brains washed of faculties deemed extraneous in combat, or on this day, massacre. Gregor applied concussive maintenance to kickstart an ogled O. Yawning gates gulped shut, ushering heat waves even through Gestalt's shield, warm like the chylus on a clear day. Alchemized psychopathy manifest. Scarabs waded into the fray, spraying supersonic lead from snub-nosed, belt-fed automatic rifles. Mothers fell, curled over crying children. Drunken warriors flew from wagons, torn to splinters, before they could share the fate of the wounded, crawling from their hospital rolls into the wolf den. The slow gait of the up-armored death squad, their primary weakness, made irrelevant by the deep strike. Here they were hornets among bees. Gregor heaved O into standing, crouching into the mosaic's rain shadow. Stout and inhumanly stalwart, O tall and monolithic. Defiant, burst fire hit him like a flurry of sucker punches. As the story went, he'd been quite the boxer in the slave pits of Orn. Gregor prayed that story true. Disarm, Gregor ordered when a belt jam stalled a scarab. The command hit to no effect but to give away his position. Gestalt decoded and reconstructed miraculously encrypted sevish tones uttered from the scarab's mechanical voice box. A voxer. Fire ineffective. May the major pacify the mosaic. Grail two. Grail three. Eliminate the crux of scum and net survivors for the provost's interrogators. Then once more they opened fire. 
Tracer streaks followed geodesic bends as Noshkri shielded Sophie and Schneider, warping the curvature of material, bending the pathways of light and the natural order. Unseen tendrils of death, faster than sight, flung awry. Redirected bullets rebounded off scarab barriers' projections, slugged horses and split barrels full of mead. I need a base of fire for the sake of all that is good, Gregor shouted to Wraith, crawling to Boda, who tossed her a rifle from behind the cover of a braying brick, skewed, thrashing in a pool of her own blood. Boda and Wraith rocked their rifles, but his command confused them. Shoot the scarabs, shoot the tent, just fire back for the blood of Eris. Greg kicked at mud, digging deep into O's safety as he could nestle. O, still smouldering, answered his call. You fairy fascist fuckers will never take me alive. Meaty bucks of a silverstone punctuated his reckless battle cry. Each of the six's six shots pounding like a smack to Gregor's temples. Following the example, Boda and Wraith remembered their rifles and joined in. Their sparse pops mere mutters compared to the incoming cracks. The scarab's barriers manifested as translucent plates of Myria aligned with clearer purpose than Noshkri's redirect, flinging mashed metal back at their source, ripping new holes through the warbling equine and finishing her off in mercy. The maelstrom of misaligned and indiscriminate trajectories shredded the chief's tent. A conflagration consumed the elk-strewn canvas as a man, muzzled by gas sack and hooded in a magister's cloaked coat, erupted from the great lodge on a column of fire, surfing the volcanic spew. Intense heat against bare skin ceased Wraith and Boda's meagre counterattack. The column dispersed, throwing the magister high into the sky, he seized the material means to hold himself aloft and a line of all things, a pistol over Gregor. A small plume of dust announced a pockmark in the red grass beside him. Deafened by the unrelenting firefight, he hardly heard the snap. Gregor tweaked his back again. Stumbling into the pose of a surly javelinier, he threw his feather forth. The white flag unfurled. The red poppy of Lady Velka, a battle standard planted amongst the clouds as loose linen threads ignited. Gestalt's radiance outshined the wield. The magister again under gravity's sway plummeted towards the mesa below. Gestalt to me! Without inertia, the blade slung back to him, freeing the magister from his snare. His own puppeteer, the magister, tangled himself in myric wires to slow the uncontrolled descent. Gestalt returned. Gregor braced to charge the off-balance pyromancer. You! Wraith's cry precluded her shot. She racked her bolt just as Gregor taught her and fired a second skywards. In her anger, she denounced herself, driving Gregor back into cover, and gave her enemy magister time to jink. Green mirrored radii emanated from a quick but deliberate gesture as he propelled himself laterally upon conjured combustion, twirling through the air at high speed into a cushion of counteracting propellant. From impact into slow fall, the Magister landed into a dancer's two-step, hurling waves of fire towards Boda and Wraith. Gregor sprang into action, lurching, catching fire against the immutable crag of Gestalt. Fingers of smokeless fire dispersed into a vast wall of ash. The pyromancer lacked the fortitude of his scarab cronies, but wielded wit instead and whipped the dust into a smokescreen over the battlefield, obscuring him from incoming attacks, but so too obscuring them from scarabs. Amid the window of opportunity, Gregor choked down fistfuls of black air to issue a new command, avert to any and all who'd hear, to spare minds from unsheathed sanctimony. From a mighty draw, Gregor swung without grace, like playing pick-up stickball with all the other kids from the factory floor. Concussed air, carried by the impact of silver rays in the direction of his comrades, blasted smoke over the mesa's edge and over the valley. Those who fled or fought knocked off their feet and under the line of scarab blind fire. With divination came revelation. Sheathing the blade and snuffing the blazing light, the shock and awe of the attack became apparent. The lion hearts of Twish fled with their families. Opportunists turned through Schneider's cart, running off with booze and bruise. Even the veterans of this insurrection froze in terror before brothers, sisters, comrades, strewn throughout the high red grass, glinting with this morning's condensation of blood. Pulling O by the shoulder, Gregor initiated withdrawal, but Boda and Wraith remained suppressed by their own terror. Gregor ran to them and jerked Wraith by the scruff of the blouse. I need you to get everyone out of here, Gregor said. 
With burnt edges, a white flag fluttered from above. He caught it and shook the embers dry. But... Wraith's objection fell short when Gregor brandished Gestalt, sultry in a charred white dress, testimony that he would force any who argued. You're the only fighter who can clear the way of watchers. You two need to keep your personal conflicts at bay. There are children who need to be saved. Got it? Boda nodded. Still readjusting to thrice disrupted sight, Wraith gathered her broken watcher rather than answer. Sir Ben, called Schneider, waving them over to his shelter behind a half moon of four overturned wagons. We need to regroup. I'm counting on both of you. A reassuring pat on Wraith's back earned a surefire nod. She racked her rifle ready. Gregor let them flee first before drawing back to counterattack from a more advantageous fighting position. Schneider's companions rematerialized in a shower of glittering mirrored from a pocket beyond light and time, manifested by Noshkri for Sophie's safety and disrupted by Gregor. The photographer sobbed hysterical, more meat from a decimated body than freckles stippled her dimpled cheeks. Behind the improvised battlements of wagons stood a white hospital tent offering false promises of sanctuary established by international conventions. No treaties or accords would save them now. Reserved for Arik and Ty, the two joined the huddle. Arik had strength enough to lift himself on a heartland cane. The adrenaline tightened his sodden features. Less ready, Ty's arm, barely bound and stitched, necrotic as Noshkri's unholy remedies realized themselves. Ty carried a mithrite axe that sung with the reverberations of latent Myria. Regardless of Ty's condition, it was fight or die. Sir Ben, you're hurt, Schneider said. A red glove formed from Gregor's blood-soaked sleeve. A self-assessing pat-down revealed a gash under his left arm, more than superficial but not life-threatening. By the blood of Eras, he cursed, but the wound remained painless for now. Rummaging through his field kit, he dug up a tourniquet that he traded to Noshkri for a tincture of opium diluted down from recreational Ladida. Gregor downed the painkiller as Noshkri cinched intravenous flow. He'd needed to end this quick or else he'd lose the arm too. What do we do? It was Schneider who asked, but all awaited Gregor's answer. They've got means to deny me. I'm not sure how, he said, sanitizing himself with meaty mead. But we're in trouble. So Gregor, Noshkri uttered, nostrils flaring. Beeswax. What? Beeswax. I can smell beeswax. The Ilish's claw picked the hole of an ear. They've gummed their ears with beeswax, a common deterrence against Acousta and Geese-type minecrafts. Very effective, but can cause ear infections. We don't have time for them to get headaches. Clever bastards. Gregor kneeled to recover and think, to shake off anger and doubt. Never before had his pacifist practice been challenged so forthright. He'd sworn long ago that to take another life, it'd be too much to bear. Yet this incalculable suffering must end. This oath had allowed his enemies to adapt, but was it not the challenges of honor and righteousness that made both so monumental, that made oaths so worth keeping? You're still alive, little guy, Schneider asked O, thumbing black powder off O's exposed chest. Got to admire that seren craftsmanship. Aye, built to last by through in the storm beard. I'll break before they take me back. You got a plan, Greg? Stroking his beard, Gregor thought he did and signalled to O, pushing fist to palm. We need to turn up the heat. A miner's signal for a good old-fashioned drill and blast. The mosaic's tattooed face lit up, grinned with golden teeth. Schneider, O said, we need the key to your explosive's locker. You got it, Schneider said, smacking Sophie on the ass, startling her from hysterics. She's your gal. Me? She gulped. Yes, why her? O oh, looked the woman head to heel, unimpressed. You think I carry keys with all these grabby hands around? There's no tumbler nor bolt this one can't beat. Schneider jerked a thumb to Noshkri, getting under his razor tooth more, scratching the good spot under the chin. Same with this mossy snorly goster, but he's more useful in a fight, ain't that right? Help us, Sophie, and you might just get that camera of yours back, Gregor said. O oh, can keep you safer than I. Win or lose, it'll be done together. You heard that bastard strap me up, lass, with everything you got. O flexed his mighty guns, carrying off the wiry pair of Sophie and Arik. We got pigs to roast. Ty cut an exit, and the four slipped out of the back of the tent. Noshkri, 
Can you penetrate their defences? Gregor asked, peeking the corner, spying on the military-grade monstrosities recalibrating behind the screen. Their barriers are beyond my myria. We'd need a relentless assault to fry off their rind. However, I theorise they employ secondary deconstructives, countermirics and silencing auras. All would impede my attempts, though I suspect you'd have a way. Noshkri's tail twisted. He lifted his oversized mitts as if more than mere muscle strained them. Rind moss painted black by the smoke storm drizzled to the floor. As I feel renewed, when before I was spent, your sword has its uses beyond just a wielder's bane. A fascinating tool. Focus. Gregor took a moment to cough. These fumes would flay his lungs. Then I'll take the pyromancer. I'll need a distraction. Can you manage that? As you need flower man, I recall I am in your debt, Noshkri said. We are comrades. We owe each other nothing, Gregor said, lingering in the spiritual glow of up-and-coming narcotics, sifting reason from adrenaline's rush. Fear is their greatest weapon. Do not be afraid. Actually, Sir Ben, Schneider clarified, that would be their bullets. Reprieved by a drop of humour into the whirlpool of stress, Noshkri faced the mirrored laughing, stepping from Gestalt, and willing forth dancing sparks of mirrored, spitting in the eye of God to walk the ruinous way. Be quick, Noshkri said, and with a sculptor's charade manifested phenomena ethereal to Gregor, forbidden sights hidden from him. Good luck, Schneider said, throwing the sign of the crux as he took O's exit. God willing, Gregor answered. Noshkri drew upon elementary powers, thrusting claws from abdominals to usher forth unseen tricks that lulled tongues of pyromancy into lapping over the far wagon wall. Into the opportunity opposite where a belt's roll threw up grass and dirt, Gregor hurried. Gregor skid, boots digging into soft soil, into the ghoulish presence of a gawking scarab, mid-pincer. Like a slap to his cognizance, the ambush startled Gregor. Despite the weight of that armoured shell, they moved under a cloak of silence. Against Gestalt, the cloak fell, revealing a cacophony of manic mechanisms. Mutually surprised, the scarab's armour locked over the electrochemistry within. Before he spat his fire, Gestalt's withheld love ravished myric arrays. Foaming heat sinks boiled and bulged like pustules as ablatives congealed. Cooked alive, the pilot's wails became the crescendo of an industrial orchestra waxing nostalgic the industrial causeways of Tamarinth. The Voxer voice box prattled nonsense, barriers broke, and alchem lubricants gummed gyros, just like the camera. Gregor attacked into the torment, under a rifle that couldn't depress and struck through the arms, lenses shattered into eyes by a viper's jab of hilt against faceplate. Without the quality of encants, armor sheets broke like porcelain pots. Unmasked, the meat beneath didn't look a man, but what did resemble a face wore stupor and malaise. He forgot to scream on, desensitized to pain by alchem aerosols, collapsed into lethal doses of desoxyephedrine and other neurotoxic binding agents. Gregor reached into the oven of the broken helm, where he found the familiar sear, like Crux's brands. Scooping through liquefied wax, Gregor picked an ear clean to give the soldiers final order. Protect! Surmounting organ failures and baking bones, the scarab hurled melting flesh and dissolving steel towards his once allies. An illusion. The magister's muzzle muffled a raspy voice. He whirled, wielding marksmanship as well as any myria. He levelled his sidearm and ended the zombified savant with a shot to the head. Complacency and distraction. The mistakes of veterans who'd learned to thrive in chaos and fear. Gregor knew how to seize. Striking from around the falling shell, Gestalt's sheath struck the magister's dome. The wielder stumbled, muzzle cracked, he choked in an infiltration of ash and smoke. By instinct he stretched for myric strands denied by the presence of an immortal spiritual being. Gregor wrenched the sidearm away, tossing it into the fields of grass. Open palm to palm, Gregor braced arm to blade and snapped four fingers as the magister ripped the pin of a primed masher and let it fall. Shit! Gregor punted the masher back, the distraction now his to suffer. Gregor dove and the Magister bounded, testing the material until Miria answered the call to enslave combustion. Netting the wave of force under tensile knots, the Magister sprung free. The solidified shockwave quavered like the edges of a mirage. 
Gregor braced, and the snapback chewed him with shrapnel teeth, serrated incisors soared at tensing tissues while the weight of vertigo pinned him down. The magister ripped off his muzzle, gasping against the burning air, a pallid face of a young soul beneath, grown feverish from tapping his own heat to amplify his capacity as a human weapon. Flash burns and layered skin grafts pulled cracked lips like burnt paper around white teeth, perfect and arcane. Gregor had been no older when the Mielenstadt called, but he could at least be proud that never once did he stand smiling amid his own corpse flower cultivation. A conquered people are two people of God, Gregor shouted, baiting an answer. Treat them so, for their salvation is at hand. How could you do this? The material reacted to the Magister's snap. Smokeless eruption, a cloud over Gestalt, like the raging sea surging in defiance against a lighthouse. Gregor assessed smokeless miasmas of plasma for signs of the Magister for secondary fires giving off smoke. Though the myria withheld, smolder over grass crept ever closer. Before the air too could betray Gregor, the gaunt ghoul flirted with Lady Surprise. The Magister manifested into Gestalt's globe, bayonet thrust. Gregor parried out of a low kneel, catching his enemy on a peppered shoulder, hurling them into the brush fire. Gregor clutched his supernal blade, shedding an ignited flag, holding hard the sensual hilt, ready to shed too the contoured sheath. He found he could not draw, she held him up in her arms. Unable to win the battle within any longer, coughs struck him low, where the air smelt of corn poppies and the decades of rust upon him wore raw. A white dress twirled, wood and canvas flew, the magister hurled debris and rolled free, flaming into the dust. Gregor saw his window through blankets of vertigo, but ripped muscles and asphyxiation brought him down. The Magister doused himself and plied for plums of blue jay. Facing total collapse, cramps clutched Gregor's chest as breaths came as if through tar. A bayonet pounded tin, and the Magister drank down Obreu. He spat, finding the regenerative reduced to powder by Gestalt. A final blow, but not enough. The tiny twisted daggers writhing like maggots throughout Gregor's body seemed to be the worst of his wounds. But he struggled even for the self-control to recovery breathe, rasping back the black lotuses of unconsciousness while the executioner's squad convened. At either flank of the pyromancer came a scarab's aid. Coddling a broken hand, clutching his mouth with mirrored, the magister called wind to keep the fresh air for himself. The scarabs sought not their master's permission to raise their rifles. An angry boulder, bristling with red veins of dynamite, drove bald head into ribbed back plates. For the ancestors! Then catastrophic chemistry wiped away all sensation. The mesa reformed from a vibrating string, an acoustic ring that from all else came, from eerie resonances to visions of carnage. A red storm raged under dark clouds, a vortex rolling off a preternatural blister, blasting away tents into ash and disintegrating fauna. At the eye of the firestorm, a magister aglow hellfire corralled enough blasting power to deface a small mountain. Too great to capture, the storm calmed gradually as it spun off, diffusing across the land. The hot wind howling, Gregor could reach out and touch the shimmering air where Gestalt ceased. Planted low and wide, the magister's magnificent feet weighed heavy as he dispersed the great conflagration. A nova over the mesa's mound, a destructive disc carried out over a shockwave centred upon the magister, the last shriek of an infernal nightmare that gave to a dark sky, broken by fragmentary blue blushed sunlight, the remnants of homes, horses and hospital doused by the gush of wind and ensuing black rain. In awe of the awesome and sinister power, Gregor let the warm wash of unsettling precipitation fall over him, his throat burnt and effort spent. A mosaic sculpture, blue-green glass caked in black snow, stood in O's footprints. A bottomless scowl, the visage of victory. Having taken considerable damage, the mosaic assumed stone shape for subsequent recovery and repair. Already the malleable mithritic alloy oozed together to inject moulds of deep wounds and internal contusions. The magister had no such regenerative techniques and fell into the ashes beside the broken scarabs whose armour had been cracked like crab shells and their juicy innards slurped out. What is the purpose of this wanton slaughter? Gregor asked, cracking open his canteen and gulping down the sacred water. The magister struck the strings in reaction. Impotent sparks fell with the rain. 
Although lacking the sorcerer's innate gift of second sight, Gregor could read tortured strings. Material damaged by wheels assumed unpredictable patterns, acted in erratic ways. He may not conjure his eminent heat, but he could persist, push through and cause irreparable harm to the cosmic fabric, destroying himself and who knew who else. Gregor stumbled closer to prevent such a reckless act. Do your masters have no need of slaves? No need of workers? Sunken into embers and muck, the magister looked to the rain just as Gregor had. A glue of wax and dirt dripped from his ears, melted at long last. You are one to talk of slaves, artisan. I live for the day you cruxes are so few we're hunting you down with growls and hounds. You did this, all this, in the name of bigotry. Hate has done this to you. Have the anarcho-tyrants of Ascalonia forgotten that they too once dwelled in places like this? That in doing this, you have become the very image of the cruxes who eradicated the endless who lived here? Are these cultures really so threatening to you? Spare me the doctrine, terrorist scum, the magister said. You're out here placing brands upon these people's thoughts. I know the shape of a terror cell. Meanwhile, you let these vultures of capital query and prospect. He tried to rise when Gregor knelt near, ready to fight on. Look at how here your myria fails you, Gregor said. If it were any more righteous or well than the ways of industrialists, then there would not be such a foil as I. More than just me, you face a great force here of enlightened peoples who know what it means to be unshackled by tyrants. I hear your master Mortigan fancies himself an endless imitation, that he's burned his body and is not but dust and magic. I'd like to see this metallic tomb of his, see how Mortigan Venskarts would fare against me. Would he share your lack of confidence and arm himself? Gregor slipped, his anger getting the better of him, and indulged the temptation to humiliate the proud. Or would he trust his gift and crumple before me, faring worse than you? What a master to serve! And would you look at that? The magister picked through his frayed coat. Seems I used my contingency masher to try and best you. What a shame! You better kill me. There is no sanctuary where I will not find you. If you came here to die, you can do it yourself, Gregor said but I offer you the opportunity to live with these choices. For every life you've taken, you've destroyed immeasurable peace. Your debt of blood is... I know your capabilities, artisan. I do not pity your fate, the magister said. Make me your slave if that is what you intend, but sleep with a knife under your pillow. I'm offering you the chance to be free, Gregor said. With Miria, I am free. The magister pumped his fist sky high. Saul Sivan! Both hands planted on Gestalt's guard, Gregor raised his voice to end this fight and walk forth. How many more stolen lives hung, chained from his ankles, clawing against him, dragging Gregor ever downwards and back to Ministep? Desert, and may our masters decide our fate.